morning guys welcome back to the channel we're in the car we've got the bike in the back um, we're on our way now to go meet a company by the name of motor cartel approached me on my instagram feed link in the bio um, sent me some samples and they would like to do a demo of their product uh, called velo scrub i've given that a go already very lacquer degreaser if you will um, get your bike nice and shiny leaves it shiny afterwards on top of that, they also do a nice wax, um, an epic chain wax. So that's where I'm on my way to now. We're gonna go meet the guys from Motor Cartel. They're gonna take my chain off my bike. They're gonna ultrasonically deep clean my chain, then dip it in boiling wax, and then put it back on my bike. I think this is gonna be a very interesting little mission. To Lanceria, let's go meet the boys. Let's see what this is all about. I can't wait. Alrighty guys, uh, we just got here. Um, motor cartel HQ let's get this chain clean I guess <laughs> Freshly launched off the Motor Cartel stable, known as Motor Cartel Anti Drag uh, Complex. And the process um, might look at the face of it very complicated, but we're going to break it down for you Barney style. And hopefully, by the end of this, you will have a good understanding of the best way to go about waxing your chain and making sure you don't get wax all over your hands and screw up your ability to go for a sweet ride on a weekend. So, stick around. Right, so let's get started. So in front of me today, I have got a whole bunch of goodies. Uh, first and foremost, chamber's plug, motor cartel velo scrub. This is our own degreaser that we're going to be using in the ultrasonic cleaning process today. The wax goes inside the slow cooker, right. otherwise known as a crock pot, uh, whatever you want to call it. It's basically going to warm up this um, ceramic dish and it's going to melt the wax. Typically, the wax gets to about 63, 64 degrees centigrade and it will start melting. Uh, word of advice, do not use your mother's crock pot or your wife's crock pot. Your Sunday roast is going to taste well funny and we will not help be held responsible for bad tasting Sunday roast. Okay, so I have a couple of cleaning uh, containers here in front of me. The first one is filled with acetone. Second one is going to be filled with water. Third one is also filled with, with acetone. So a quick note on the solvents that you have to use. The reason we use solvents is because it's the easiest way to cut the crud from your chain. Anything else from a degreaser perspective, it will clean, but it will clean up to a point. It's not going to clean as um, well as the level of clean that is required for the product to work really well. Use acetone. If you don't like acetone, it tends to make a lot of fumes. Uh, so don't use it in an enclosed space. Use it in an, you know, just use your common sense, really. Mineral turpentine. Um, again, each come with their pros and cons. I wouldn't advise you use things like petrol or, or gasoline. Use paraffin, you can use benzene, but be aware that both of those products, they do leave a, a microscopic oily residue behind and that affects the wax's ability to adhere to the metal surface. For those of you that don't know, an ultrasonic cleaner is a device that's uh, designed to create um, cavitation. Uh, in the water or in the liquid that you put in the device and that cavitation which is really hundreds and millions of little bubbles that pop at a really high velocity and the pop creates a mechanical uh, cleaning action on anything that's dirty and as you'll see later on when we put the supposedly clean, clean chain into the device you will see how what looks like a clean chain is actually not a clean chain yeah, then to protect our hands, obviously we got uh, some gloves. Uh, I've just got regular nitrile gloves. Uh, the solvents that I'm working with do tend to eat the gloves, so you can expect the gloves to expand as I work in uh, the dirty stuff. You're going to need a side cutter, um, some safety wire, I'll explain why a little bit later on, and obviously a chain remover to take the chain off your bike. To enable the cleaning process to work a little bit better in the ultrasonic cleaner, I'm going to use a little bit of our Velo scrub, uh, just spray that into the water. We've pre-filled the ultrasonic cleaner with boiling water. 
this device does have a built-in heater but because of the power of the heater it does not uh, warm up really quickly so um, it will take us forever and we only have so much time so we'd like to um, start off as quickly as possible so we fill this with um, heated water now to start I'm gonna put on my gloves your hands and your skin when working with these kinds of products because they, uh, they can mess you up and not in a good way so uh, there's your health and safety message. Thanks uh, to Motocart Health. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this um, chain inside um, the acetone now. Because this is a very, very strong solvent, technically what this is going to do is going to clean the chain um, really, really good. Now, there's going to be a few of you watching this going, oh, he's using acetone. How dare he use acetone? What a crazy person. Now, um, I've been involved in the dirt biking and bicycle world or cycling world for many years. Um, I've messed with every type of chemical you can probably imagine. I've used petrol. I understand the mechanics behind chains. I understand the mechanics behind most things. And through my testing, what I've come to realize is acetone is cool because it, first of all, evaporates very quickly, which I like. And um, secondly, it has probably one of the strongest um, solvent actions out of most solvents and it doesn't leave any residue so like i said gasoline petrol whatever you want to call it benzene uh, all of those kinds of things they tend to leave a residue and you don't want that residue because you're going to change the adhesive uh, adhesion capabilities of the wax so this is why i use it also a bicycle chain doesn't have o-rings and because it doesn't have o-rings we do not have to worry or concern ourselves with the fact that we're going to be damaged rubber o-rings so that's my reasoning behind using acetone. And um, as an information statement, use it, don't use it. To while away the time, um, I think we'll probably use this opportunity to tell you guys a little bit about motor cartel. So um, we are predominantly an off-road motorcycle accessories company. That's kind of where we started, kind of decided to create some cool stuff because we live in a country where cool stuff is um, not always available and we're forever having to import things from all over the world so we decided well let's make our own stuff and see if we can sell that into the market and just add value uh, valuable or you know value add products um, that other guys would probably want but they struggle to get so we created a line of accessories and uh, as time went on you know, uh, as the saying goes, what's the saying? Um, necessity is the mother of all invention. That's the one. We came up with um, something to solve for chain chatter on dirt bikes. And yes, I do use this on my dirt bike. So for those of you that want to know, can I use this on my dirt bike? The answer is yes. Now, once we've done that, we realized, oh, well, we need something to ch clean chains with. Um, uh, properly and clean bicycles with properly or clean our bikes with properly and then we thought well the wax is more applicable to the cycling world um, but we need something to go with the wax because um, guys might not always want to use um, solvents and stuff to clean their chain so that's how we came up with um, the velo scrub and um, you know we're a product of lockdown um, as the world has been gripped by the coronavirus pandemic um, we used the downtime to come up with ideas and the company was essentially founded in probably one of the weirdest times in human history. So there you go, that's a little background on motor cartel. There we go. Another thing to mention, um, you understand the concept of mechanical tolerances, right? Um, that's going to come into play when you consider whether your chain is super clean or not clean at all. Now, I'm obviously taking um, a toothbrush that I will not use again. And um, I'm trying to get into all the nooks and crannies, all the spaces that I cannot see with my naked eye, which tends to be the little open spaces in between all the metal and metal, metal on metal surfaces. And um, you will see that when I put the chain um, into the ultrasonic cleaner, um, the water in the ultrasonic cleaner is going to change color. You'll see a little cloud of muck and dirt uh, float up into um, the, the water as uh, the cavitation or the, the bubbles pop against the metal surface and um, that's proof that you can't always get into uh, all of the really really small spaces um, in between all the rollers and the inner and outer, or the inner and outer sides of the links 
That's why we use um, ultrasonic cleaner. It's sort of like your last line of defense, the last line of clean. And uh, you can effectively use just about anything. We put very hot water in the ultrasonic cleaner. We also put in some of our Velo scrub, but you could probably just put Velo scrub in there on its own. Um, you also don't have to use either of those. You can use whatever degreaser you're into. You can use boiling water on its own with a little bit of dish soap. The point is you want to create a action brought about by a surfactant. Now if you've ever read the label of your mom's washing powder, you'll understand that it's got a surfactant in it. If you want to get sciencey on it, a surfactant is nothing more than a special chemical which exerts a binding action as a first pass and a lifting action as a second pass. So if you picture at a microscopic level a piece of dirt stuck to a surface and you spray a surfactant on it, what it's going to do is from a molecular standpoint it's going to cause the dirt to um, become enrobed by the surfactant which causes a stickiness to the surfactant and then the second piece is um, it causes it to lift off the surface and once it lifts off the surface that's the cleaning action because it removes it and then what you get left behind is a super clean surface thanks Bill Nye science guy yeah. some of you will have watched every YouTube video on planet earth about waxing the best way to wax um, you know if you're Australian you'll do it this way if you're American you'll do it that way if you live in Europe you'll do it yet another way um, but there's no right or wrong way, there's just whatever you find that works best for you. But let me give you some advice. When you start off with a chain like I have here today, the chain is pretty cruddy, right? And um, the problem with a really cruddy chain is there's only so much time in the day, and the bristles of these brush is only so long. So if you, after, you know, however long cleaning your chain, find that it's not really as clean as what you wanted, um, err on the side of caution, Leave your chain overnight in the solvent. I promise you it won't wreck the chain. This is all metal. Um, most chains have got corrosion protection. Uh, the newer chains are made from a kind of metal that avoids rusting, so you won't have that reality. By leaving the chain in the solvent overnight, um, you give the solvent the best possible chance at cleaning the chain as good as what the thing needs to be cleaned, right? So that's something that you can do. And then for, you know, some people that don't have a lot of time that go, oh, but, you know, this is a really complicated process. Well, you know, so is keeping a Boeing in the air and so is servicing and maintaining a supercar. But people still buy that. So this is going to be the kind of product for you as a discerning cyclist. It's not necessarily going to be for the weekend warrior that doesn't really give much thought into... Um, the longevity of the mechanical contact surfaces of his bicycle but then again let me not underestimate the kind of person that you are I guess um, it's just important to point out how to do things the right way to get the best possible result so up to you right so I've taken this chain out the chain is pretty clean um, you can see what's left behind in the deep, in the uh, solvent um, is a whole bunch of muck so I'm just going to dip this in really hot water just to get the excess off and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the chain and I'm going to dip it in a second bath of solvent now the reason I do this is that the same solvent? exactly the same no, right. no different okay now for all intents and purposes, this chain is about as clean as it's going to be. Now, if it was my personal chain and I had all the time in the world, what I would do is I would leave it overnight in, in the solvent and I would probably be the kind of guy, because that's the kind of guy I am, I'd have multiple chains. So uh, for those of you wondering, oh, but hold on, multiple chains, different wear patterns on cassettes. Yes, I know, but you know, you can't have it all. So. Uh, I would probably have multiple chains and using multiple chains gives me the ability to um, have one chain in the works and another chain on the bike. Yeah. Correct. Yeah.
So like a system for the indoor guys especially. If you do use it indoor, uh, just put a little bit uh, of a mat down. Okay. Obviously it's going to create um, a bit of uh, a mess. At least for the first couple of kilometers until the excess has come off. But outside obviously it doesn't matter. You don't want to see the chain and I'm going to initiate the um, ultrasonic cleaning process. Okay. So I purposefully left a couple of globs of, of oil here um, because I think the, what I want to show you is what happens to the color of the water when you put it in an ultrasonic cleaner. Um, technically you'd want your chain a whole lot cleaner before you get to this part of the process but I'd be left a bit red faced if I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner and the water doesn't change color. <laughs> Sorry bro. <Yeah. laughs> so it's not a TV ad. Yeah. <laughs> I put the timer on the ultrasonic cleaner to 20 minutes and I'm going to push start. Whoa. So now look at the, the color change of the water. You can see how a cloud of dirt is rising to the surface. That's crazy. Right, so we'll let that run for 20 minutes and when minutes. we're done it will come back. And essentially what is happening there? It's so um, what the machine does is it generates very very high uh, frequency um, which are emitted as vibrations. The vibration goes into the water. Um, the reason you use a basket uh, on top of the metal base is you create a separation layer between the bottom of the ultrasonic cleaner and the chain. If you had to put the chain directly on the bottom surface of the ultrasonic cleaner, the vibrations would go straight into the chain and not into the water. And by doing that, um, it's not going to work properly. So you want that separation layer. But what that does is the vibration goes into the water. It creates millions and billions of little bubbles around the edge of all of the surfaces of the object that's in the water. And it creates those bubbles um, uh, known as cavitation and then those bubbles pop and um, it creates sort of a mechanical cleaning process which is why the water has changed color. Look at that water, jeez. After that is uh, that's mad. Whatever you choose to use though, uh, do make sure that um, you wash it off or the excess uh, off with hot water because if it mixes into the wax, you're going to thin out the wax. Now, speaking of wax, notice how when I stir it, there's like a little bit of cloudiness in it. Now the cloudiness comes as a result of the wax mixing with the super low drag coefficient compound which is known as PTFE for short. PTFE? Yeah. Right. Uh, PTFE is a type of plastic. Uh, it's powdered, micronized plastic. Um, and um, when you mix it together, that's when the two compounds are technically emulsified, kind of like putting food in a blender. And um, now it's ready to wax. Hmm. So what I do is I take the safety wire, cut the little piece off, um, weave it through uh, the top two holes of the last two links, hold the chain in half, and then take the bottom of the chain and feed it through the same um, piece of wire. Right? Uh, that gives you control of the entire chain because the chain is quite long. So you fold the chain in half, feed the wire through it. Now you've got control over. A much shorter item. Make sense? Yeah. All right. So what I'm going to do now is take the chain and I'm going to swish it around, making sure you coat everything. Oh, look at that. Is that hot? Yeah. Might be a little bit too hot, actually. What is the ideal temperature? The guy wants to. No, no hotter than 
Right, so the ideal temperature for your wax, um, you can use a, a syrup temperature gauge, um, like what they use for cooking, um, sweets and things. Um, ideally, you want the temperature of the wax to go no higher than about 94, 95 degrees, 93 to 95, somewhere around there. Um, if you think in Fahrenheit, um, then just do a quick conversion. Um, but basically, that's the temperature you want because that's how you're going to get um, the best use out of the wax. If you think about it from this perspective, the wax starts melting at um, 63 degrees, so you don't really have to go much heavy, uh, hotter than that, but I'd say, you know, that range between 93 and 95 is probably uh, the top end of the scale that you want. So all I'm doing at the moment is uh, just shaking off the excess, because obviously we've dipped it in the solution. Now, our solution, um, it comes out white when it melts, it's all white. Sometimes you don't get the best uh, clean on your chain, which is fine, it's not a big deal. Um, because of uh, the fact that you've loosened some of the dirt, you may find that some of the dirt finds its way into the wax. If the wax changes color and it becomes like a darkened color, that's probably meaning that you've cleaned enough chains now and it's time for you to throw the, the excess wax away. An easy way for you to dispose of it is, first of all, it's pretty environmentally friendly because of the fact that it is a wax base and um, you technically can wait for it to dry, dig it out of the crock pot, break it up into small pieces and throw it in the bin. Because um, as a paraffin wax base, you don't have to concern yourself with the fact that it's going to mess up the environment. And also, the ratio of wax to PTFE is of such a nature that it's not going to poison some rivers, river system uh, near to your house. That's fantastic news though. I was actually going to ask. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we'll take um, the wax, we'll hang it up to dry, give it about 10 minutes to dry. Once it's dried, I'll show you a very stiffened chain and then we'll show you the last part of the process. Awesome! It's so fun, bro. Okay, moment of truth. So, <laughs> if your chain looks like this, then it's properly wax, nice and stiff. Now, so what we do now is we articulate the links, which is a clever way of saying we've just got to crack them to loosen them up and get rid of the excess. So I'm just going to straighten the chain. <laughs> Look at that thing. Yeah, and then um, we just drag the chain over my finger like this. That cracks the links and it just loosens them up so uh, that stiffness disappears. Oh, look at that eh? mm. There yeah. we go. Now you've and got then we've got a chain that wobbles again. Yeah, now, mm -hmm. you've, got, now you've got a pliable chain that bends. That's awesome. Yeah. Right there. Cool. And so this chain is now uh, waxed and ready to go. Okay. Get a hold of the product. Uh, we are in the process of uh, agreeing, negotiating uh, with various uh, cycle shops around uh, Johannesburg, Pretoria and the Kamosi, the Gauteng region. Hopefully we'll uh, be able to expand into the other regions around the country, but for now I think to help us grow, uh, we're a small company, uh, we're a startup, so uh, any word of mouth is welcomed, but um, you can head on over to most cycle shops, um, ask them about it, they'll give us a call, we can furnish them with the product. At a retail level for a bag of wax, 250 grams, you're looking at about 149 Rand 95. Also, if you want to get hold of the Velo Scrub degreaser for your bike, for uh, a bit of cleaning in the kitchen, but mostly your bike, um, you can also head on to uh, most uh, cycle shops uh, to ask for the product. Uh, and again, you can also give us a shout if, if you want some more information. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, that was super, super cool. Thank you, Motor Cartel. You guys have been super amazing. Thank you for the gesture to clean my chain and show me what it's all about. Um, ultrasonic cleaning and all the information. It's been really, really great. Thank you, guys. Uh, for your chance to win a bit of Velo Scrub and uh, anti-drag comp wax, for a bag of each of these, um, five lucky winners are going to be getting one of these. Head over to my Instagram page, head over to Motor Cartel Instagram page, head over to my YouTube channel, subscribe that channel, like that channel, share the hell out of all of this, um, and yeah, all those deets on my, on my Instagram, on uh, Motor Cartel's Instagram.
you can win. Okay. All right, rad guys. I'm sure you enjoyed that as much as I did. That was super interesting. Thank you so much, Motor Cartel. Um, you guys are awesome. Um, I have a nice, fresh, sparkling waxed chain, um, and I can't wait to put 400, 500 k's into that puppy. Um, for all the details and where to get hold of Motor Cartel, in the description below. Also, have a look out for Motor Cartel to hit retailers soon. And for your chance to win, make sure you head over to our Insta, um, head over to my channel, and make sure you subscribe and follow. Um, we'll drop the deets as soon as the vlog is live. Uh, should be live already. Laka, description, all the details.